Hello, today we're going to do a podcast editing session within Adobe Audition front to back. We're going to start with recording our simple narration, editing it down within the multi-track mixer, adding a music bed, and exporting it out. If you already have your narration recorded, you can skip ahead to where I start with the editing portion of it. So first, before I start actually recording, I want to clean up this space a little bit. Um, basically, within Audition, I don't need every panel open, especially on the top right. I don't need the essential sounds panel open. So I'm going to click the hamburger menu and close this panel. Now I want to point out in Audition or any Adobe product, if you ever end up closing something that you didn't mean to or whatever, or the layout gets funky and you don't know what happened, you can always come up to window here, go to your workspace and then hit reset to save layout. You can also see there's a bunch of different preset uh, workspaces here. We're on the default one right now. And if I just hit reset to save layout, you can see, look, that essential sound comes right back. So I'm going to close that. And now before I start recording, I want to make sure I'm using the right input device. So by going to your audition menu up here, go to preferences in audio hardware, you can see what your input device is. And if you hit the drop down, there should be a selection of the microphone in your computer or something I have plugged in. So I'm using my my headset right now to record this with. It's not the best microphone for doing voiceover work, but it's the one I'm using for doing screen tutorials. So I have on another screen here, I have the script laid out. So I'm just gonna read from that script and I'm gonna do my narration. So I'm gonna do this as I would normally do it. Um, I'm gonna mess up. That is perfectly acceptable. You should mess up when you're doing your narration. And that's okay. Come down to the bottom where the little red button is for record. I'm gonna press it to start recording. Now you see right away it's going to ask me to give it a name before I even start the recording. So uh, name this something that makes sense. Don't just name it something that is mumbo jumbo like Untitled 2 because eventually you're going to have a lot of untitled things and you're not going to know what they all are. Uh, I'm going to call this podcast demo and it's my Angela interview so I'll just say Angela there. Leave everything else the same, uh, the default. You know it's actually looking at um, the microphone you're using so some microphones you won't be able to actually change this with you can change it to mono but it doesn't really matter we're gonna leave it like it is and once I hit OK it's gonna start recording okay this is my angel interview in three two one hello this is Keith Strayovi with a student profile recently I sat down with Angela Salvatore a freshman at Sacred Heart University and a student in the broadcast training program Angela comes from Long Island. Three, two, one. Angela comes from Long Island. I can't say it right now. Long Island. Okay. Three, two, one. Angela comes from Long Island, where she attended Wheatley High School and was the president of the video club during her junior and senior years. In addition to her involvement in the video club, Angela was also a member of the gymnastics club with the floor routine being her favorite event. She is also a black belt in Taekwondo and practices the extreme stylings of parkour and is a certified stunt trainer. Activities like these come with risks. Angela has suffered from a concussion and has a fractured her L4. Three, two, one. Angela has suffered from a concussion and has fractured her L4 and L5 vertebrae. I am very... Three, two, one. One. I am very excited about the experiences that she brings to the program. And I, excuse me. Three, two, one. I am very excited about the experiences that she brings to the program, and I look forward to the work that she will be producing in the coming years at Sacred Heart. This has been Keith Strayovi with a student profile. Three, two, one. This has been. This has been Keith Strayovi with a student profile. Thanks for listening. And now you can hear, I, I messed up a couple times. It's perfectly fine. It's okay to mess up. You should mess up and do retakes. If you know Some people can do all that in one take, and God bless them, but most of us are mortal, and it takes a couple takes, and I'd rather people stop, go back, and retake things than try to push through. Now that I have this done, um, I need to create a multi-track editor. So I don't, I'm not going to edit this. This is my original... Uh, file and yeah, as, actually, as you can see up here, um, anything I just created it has a little asterisk next to it because it's not saved. So if I do my file save as, 
now it's going to ask me to save it in a location. So I want to do this. It's a good idea to do this before you get going. Um, you don't want your computer crashing in the middle of editing and losing everything. So um, I'm going to change this location. I don't want it there. So I'm actually going to go to my OneDrive here. Uh, this, you know, if you have an external hard drive that you're using, that's where you should be navigating to. You should have a folder set up for this, which I do. I'm going to save it to here. And then I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to leave it as a uh, WAV format because it's the highest quality to edit with. And now I've saved it. Great. This is saved. I'm going to leave it like this. Now what I want to do is start a multi-track session. So on my top left here, right now in the waveform, the button to the right is multi-track. So I'm going to click on that. And again, it's going to ask me to create, uh, give it a name and create the session and choose a location. So session name, I'm going to say this is my podcast audition demo um, and then I'm going to go to folder location again and go to that same folder I was just in oh, I want my columns view I like my columns view courses 102 fall podcast audition demo choose and it's named correctly, it's in this right spot. I'm leaving everything else the same. I'm not gonna change anything, I'm gonna hit okay. Now I'm gonna just show you my finder window here. Now you can see in here, um, it's created, I've, I've saved that recording I just did. This is this one right here, that's the recording I just made. This is one I made earlier up here. And this is the folder that just got created because when I created um, my project file, which is this right here, podcast audition demo dot SESX, it put it inside a folder and we're going to find out why that is a little bit later. So now I'm going to come back here and it's already created six tracks by itself with a master track at the bottom. And within the tracks, you can do some great things with these. I'm not going to show you everything in this. I'm just going to try to keep it uh, simple for this purposes. One habit I like to do is I like to rename tracks because right now it's just track one through six. You can do up to like 999 tracks or whatever. If you ever get that many tracks, that's just insane. But we can rename these. So if I click on track one, I can name this narration. I can click on track two and name this my music bed. You know, whatever it needs to be. If you're doing multiple interviews, each one can be on its own track. So I like to keep it separate like that. Now I'm going to bring, this is, I find this the easiest way to edit something like this. I'm just going to bring this right in here I'm going to make it start at 10 seconds, although we're going to edit some of this off, but there it is. My track is in here. Uh, above here, you can see this is the entire timeline and I can drag this box and move it back and forth to see it. I can also grab the ends of this box and I'll zoom out or zoom in. And just like most Adobe programs, if I hit the backslash key, It'll zoom all the way out and then go back to the previous zoom when I hit the backslash key again. So I'm going to come over here. I can click on this time area up here. And I can scrub through it. I can see this is my 3, 2, 1 right here. In 3, 2, 1. I'm going to bring it to the front here. Hello. This is so That's where I start talking. Um, so now I want to trim this up. I want to bring this to here. So one way I can do this is in this instance, I can come here to the end. My icon is going to change the little red bracket with the arrow facing the direction of which clip it's going to affect. I can just click and drag that to the playhead and it's going to snap to that playhead. Boom. There it snaps there. And now I've trimmed that away. Now it's never gone. This is digital editing. Nothing ever disappears. It's just, I don't see it now. And then I can click on the title bar here and drag this to the left and put that on that 10 second mark. Now I'm going to bring my play at the beginning here. We're going to we're going to go through it and edit as we listen. Hello, this is Keith Stravey with a student profile. Recently I sat down with Angela Salvatore, a freshman at Sacred Heart University and a student in the broadcast training program. Angela comes from my now this is where I made that first mess up I couldn't say Long Island. I think I got it right here. So you can see the three two one here. I see a three, two, one right there. And this is where I get it. Angela come. So I need to get rid of this whole area in the middle. So I need to make a cut here and a cut over here. In audition, we're going to use the razor blade. So right up here, my toolbar, right now I'm on the move tool. Next to that is a little razor looking icon there. And it's the razor selection clips tool. So 
I can click on that or the shortcut for that is the keyboard R for the shortcut. And now wherever I click down on this, it's going to cut. So I'm going to come over here to this playhead here, cut it there. And I'm going to come before this breath, cut it there. And then I have a very big habit of trying to stay out of trouble. And anytime I'm done cutting, I go back to the move tool by going up to the the toolbar up here, or I can just hit the V on the keyboard to go back to my move tool so I don't make extra cuts by accident. Done that in the past. It's not fun. And now I'm going to click on this section in the middle. This is what I want to get rid of. I click on it, hit delete. Right click on it, I get the ripple delete, hit gap, and it's going to move that over for you. So I don't even have to click and drag. I could click and drag it, and it'll just close up that gap. And then I'm going to listen to this edit point. I want to make sure it sounds good. Best training program. Angela comes from Long Island. Wonderful. Where she, there's no problem with that. Okay, I need to make a cut here. So again, I'm going to hit R for the razor tool. I'm going to click there. I'm going to click here. Go to V. Click the, uh, Press V on the keyboard. Click on this. Delete on keyboard. Right click. Ripple delete. Gap. And then we're going to close this gap up at the end. And zoom all the way out. There's my edited. I made one, two, three, four cuts on it. Not bad. Now I want to add music bed. Actually, before that, go back a second. Sorry. If you notice, as I'm playing around, um, it's hitting negative six. So this is my target zone. I'm only between negative six and negative negative twelve and negative six on my DBs. Travi with a student profile. Recently, I sat down with Angela Salvatore, a freshman at Sacred Heart University and a student in the broadcast training program. Angela comes from Long Island. So it's hitting, it's hitting negative 12, negative 6. I maybe want to turn it up a little bit later on. I'm not sure yet. If I did want to turn up the whole track over here in my, the head of the track over here, I have a volume control and I could just either click and drag that or I could say I want it to be 3 dBs louder. So I can click on here on the number, press 3, return, and now it's 3 decibels louder. Where she attended Wheatley High School and was the president of the video club during her junior and senior year. Maybe I keep it there. Activities like these come with risks. Angela has suffered. It's okay if I peek it to the negative three once in a while. Um, and this is just a warning. It might be too loud. Leave it there for a second. Now I want to bring in some music. So I already went ahead and I downloaded a track from freemusicarchive.com uh, to use as royalty free music. And I'm going to just click and drag this to the beginning here and let go. And Right now I'm going to get a warning that says the sample rate of the inserted file does not match the sample rate of the session. Not a big deal. Um, I just hit OK and what it's going to do, it's going to make a, a sam uh, another copy of that audio file at the correct sample rate. And here it is. So this is it, but you can see it's much longer than what I need actually. So this is where, this is going to be a little cool little trick I can do to take this file, which is significantly longer. This is what? Uh, just over two minutes long. And I only need it to be like a minute five, minute ten. I, it's much longer than I need it. First of all, I'm going to trim off some of this end. There's always on music tracks, there's a lot of times there's silence at the beginning and the end. So I like to trim the, that off just a little bit. I wanted to start right with the music. So we're going to trim this up a little bit there. Beautiful. So this starts right there. Now with an audition I can do a really cool trick here. To get this to be the length I need it, I'm going to click on it and we're going to go to the properties of this. So make sure your tra uh, your clip is selected and if you don't see it right here, I don't see properties listed currently, I'm going to click these two arrows and go to properties. This is the properties for this clip here and there is a feature called remix. So if if it's not twirl down, if you see the remix, just hit the twirl down arrow right here on the left. And then while it's selected, again, make sure it's highlighted, hit enable remix. And now Audition is analyzing that audio track for the beats and everything. It doesn't take very long. And now it's done. It's analyzed it. It knows how long it is. And now I can come over here to the end. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can just see the whole thing. Oh, still a little too far. And you're going to see there's a little two little zigzags on the top right there. And if I hover my mouse over there, I get a little cross arrow icon there. 
when I click and drag that now, I'm going to click and drag that to like the minute 10 mark and let go. It just did a little remix. It made a couple cuts here, a cut there, and now and a cut in the beginning as well. And what that does is it remixes the the overall music track where you can't hear the transition anymore. Listen, you won't you won't notice it. There was a cut there, but Audition did this magic in the background that took only less than a second to remix it, so it's now an appropriate length for your track. In fact, I'm going to uh, just solo this so you can't hear my track right now. So you, you can't notice it. It's beautiful. Now the one thing we need to do is we need to adjust the volume. Because if I play this into the narration... Hello, this is Keith Strayovi with The Student Profile. Recently I sat down with Angela Salvatore, a freshman at Sacred Heart. The music is way too loud compared to um, my vocals. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to adjust the volume level of this track and make a fade basically right before I start talking. So I want to start like around the 8 second mark or the 7 second mark which is right here. And I want to start a fade and have it end within 2 to 3 seconds of me talking. So if you look, there is a, I'm going to make this track taller. I'm going to hit this plus button down here on the right. Make it taller so you can see what I'm doing. There's two lines here. There's a blue line, which is my left-right panning. And there is a yellow line above it that's the volume line. And you can see as my mouse touches that line, the icon next to the mouse changes to like this little pen icon. If I click on it, it's going to create a little blue diamond. I'm going to click on it again over here where I say we want to like maybe about three seconds in. I'll make another click, another blue diamond. And then I can, oops, and then I can click that blue diamond and drag it down. And now I'm lowering the volume level. So I'm going to bring it down to like negative 20 decibels about there. And now we can listen to the, the fade out. Hello, this is Keith Strayovi with a student profile. Recently, I sat down with Angela Salvatore, a freshman at Sacred Heart University and a student in the broadcast training program. And, and now it's a music bed. It's below my vocals. It's still there, but it's not overwhelming. And at some point, if I was doing a longer dialogue, I would actually fade that out at some point, and you wouldn't even notice it, and that's, that's the purpose. You don't want it to overtake uh, the vocals in any case. Now, at the end, I need to have it come back up, so I'm going to... Again, create a volume here, create a volume here, and bring this back up to zero. This has been Keith Strovey with the Student Profile. Thanks for listening. And that has a natural ending at the end. Now, if that didn't have a natural ending, if you needed to do a fade out, let's say, because the music track didn't end there, you didn't do this remix feature, you could do a fade by clicking on this gray box here and dragging this. And this, this yellow line is now another fade. So that's a little fade as well. So that's another way of doing it. But because this has a natural ending, I don't need to do that. Now if I zoom out, here it is. This is what it looks like when I'm done. On the top track is my narration with all my cuts. And on the bottom track is my music bed where I dip the audio down or duck it. It's ducking underneath the dialogue. Um, and then... It ends at the end, and now I'm ready to export this. But before I do, I want to just do a quick Command S to save it. Now, when you go to save it, because again, if you look at my files area on the top right, the podcast session is not currently saved. It has that asterisk next to it, so it's telling me it's not saved. This dialog box that is popping up, it is telling me that one or more of my files that I'm using is outside the folder. What that means is right here where I was talking about that folder I created. When I created this file, it created it within a folder. That's my project file. It's in a folder. Because I had to readjust that audio file I brought in, this it made another copy of it within this folder right here called Conform Files. Now I know all my stuff is right here. So my audio that I recorded is within this folder, so it's not a big deal. I I could say no right now, but I'm going to show you what the great part about yes is, because if you're bringing stuff from different locations, say you downloaded something, you left it in the downloads folder, and you hit, sit, said no right now, 
and you delete your downloads folder or your trash or whatever, later on, it's not going to know where that file is. When I say yes, I'm going to go back to my finder now. You're going to see I now have an imported files folder, and it imported that audio that we recorded at the beginning of the session. So even though that audio, like I said, it does exist over here, it now brought it in within its own project file. So literally, I could take this one folder, this podcast audition demo folder, I could take it off this hard drive, put it on another computer, and I have all the files for this project. And that's what the power of that little dialog box is. But now I'm not done yet. I still need to export my audio file. Because right now I just have a session. I can come back and edit more later on. But say I'm done and I want to get this out into the world. In order to export this, I need to come up to File, Export, Multitrack Mixdown, Entire Session. And then when I click on that, it's going to bring up this dialog box. The first thing you're going to see it has the name with the underscore mixdown. Now, personally, I just don't like that underscore mixdown part. I mean, it makes sense for some things. For me, I'm not a fan of it. And make sure your name is, again, appropriate to what it is. If it's an interview that you did, name it the name of the interview. Make it meaningful. Don't just make it podcast one, podcast two, because that's going to get lost later on in your career. Under format, we need to change this because a wave is not going to be great for uploading to websites. It's going to be too large. So we're going to click on the drop down and choose MP3. Everything else we can leave exactly how it is. I'm not going to worry about everything else. And then I'm going to hit OK. Oh, I almost forgot. Change the location. Make sure you hit that browse button and go and change it. And this is where I am. This is where all my other stuff is. So this is where I want it to be. Hit save. Now hit OK. And it now, if we open up that finder window again, here it is right here. There's our podcast. And this is the file right here. The podcast, what I'm, I've labeled podcast audition demo dot MP3. Make sure it's the dot MP3. This is what you would upload to Blackboard or SoundCloud or whatever site you're going to use for your audio. So that is what you need to use. And that is uh, very basic how you take. You can record into Audition, do your edits in your multi-track, add a music bed, and export out for your podcast on a very simple two-track session. Um, there's a lot, definitely a lot more you can do with an Audition, but this is just the basics to get started. Hope you enjoyed.